Now, before we get out of this job, you'll notice all these other tabs actually showed up at the top. Okay, so let's talk about these other tabs. Let's look at the Parties tab first. The Parties tab is here to enter and tie other parties that are involved in this particular job to this job. So one of the things that you'll actually get from your clients is the notice file. The notice will actually have who's involved in the job. So what you can do is you can actually tie those particular parties in the Parties tab. And they'll be noted here in the job. And this will actually have some effect on what you do later on in the turn in an RB8. When you want to create a new party, all you do is click New. So again, you'll have a blue contact field, so you're going to search and select for the contact that you want to add as a party. So you'll click your lookup button to the right, type in any part of the name. So I'll do Pettit for Frank Pettit. Select them. And then you can go over to the Billing Info tab. And just in case maybe you're going to bill them, you can do same as sold to for the billing information. If someone's going to tell you that they want it billed third party, you can always leave this unchecked. And you do have the option to select a different bill to client, a third party bill client. So maybe Frank Pettit told me in this example that he wanted this billed to an insurance company. You can go ahead and set that information now. So instead of uh, checking same as sold to, leave it unchecked. Come over to the right. Click look up contact again for the bill to contact. I'm going to clear out the firm because I'm not looking for a contact in that same firm. And I'm going to simply search for that contact's name. So I have a contact in here, Carrie Lincoln. So select Carrie Lincoln. Carrie Lincoln works for our State Farm Insurance, as you can see. And down here we give you the fields for the claim number, name of insured, date of loss, and your direct billing note. So keep in mind again, whatever you type in these particular fields here, when you do generate an invoice in the long run, this information, um, it will appear on the invoice for you. So you don't have to worry about it. So claim number, name of insured, data lost, direct billing notes will automatically appear on the invoice. Save and close. So now we have two parties. So again, you can click new and add more if you needed to. Now the bottom section down here is services requested. So if the client is telling you beforehand that they want specific services, for this particular job, then you can go ahead and note them prior to the job actually happening. So David Stratford, for example, this is a real-time job. So let's say he needed a real-time connection, he's telling us beforehand. So we don't want to forget that. A, we want to notify the reporter that it needs a real-time connection. B, we want it to tie here, because when we generate him an invoice, we want real-time connection to show up. That's what services requested will do for you. So always highlight the party that wants the service requested, and then you're going to click New and then navigate through your services. So basically this is all your service items and we'll say production and then I'll scroll down here and I'll have real time connection, save and close. This will show up on the worksheet that Daniel Berg is requesting uh, real time connection. And then in the long run, after the job takes place and we're gonna generate bills, invoices, real time connection will show up on uh, David Strafford's invoice automatically. If I wanted to add something for Frank, I would highlight Frank You notice nothing's here yet and you could go through the same process. Let's go over to the resources tab. Okay, the first thing that you'll see is specialties. Now specialties are basically special skills or traits that are required for a job. In each one of your resource setups in RB8, one of the things that you'll actually do in there is you'll add specialties that they can fulfill. So add those specialties to your resources first, and then you'll have specialties required. Uh, the way this works is you'll click Add Remove, and you'll get your list of specialties. Keep in mind, you can add more in the code manager. But let's say this was a real-time job, so this one specialty of real-time um, required. So check off real-time, save and close. So what this actually has to do with is the signing of the resources. So basically, when you go to assign, RB only looks for resources that have that same specialty in their setup. Okay, so I'll show you that in a little bit. Requested resources, basically, if they're requesting anybody, what you can do here is click your lookup button and simply search for the resource and select them. This does not physically assign the resource. It just simply notes it that they requested them. So when you're actually doing your assigning process, um, you will see that name show up. Down here at the bottom, we do have an assigned resources section. This is here for those of you that may pre-assign your jobs. Okay, If you do assign the day before, we do have an assigned resources function, which I will go over in a little bit here. But if you do pre-assign, all you have to do is click Assign Resources. 
RB will show you who's available, and all you have to do is check off who you want, and say, click Save and Close. All right, Job Level Repository tab. So this is one of the many levels of repository in RB8. This one specifically has to do with this job. So each job that you input into RB8 will have its own repository. This is where you can upload scanned documents um, into the actual job itself. So first and foremost, the one file that should be going into the job level repository is the actual notice. That is something that you uh, receive from your clients. So with that notice scanned in, or whether it's saved to your hard drive somehow, maybe from email, all you're going to do to upload that file is click on New, this new button here. Click Select Files. And then you're going to browse for that file. I'll have a fake file here called Notice. And I'll make sure I want to change my file type because this is a notice, it's not a transcript, and I'll want to select notice here. Publish it if you have RB Web, and click Save and Close. This will automatically upload it. So that file is now sitting here. So it's nice because anyone in your office from their own computer can open up this job and they'll be able to download that notice if they need it. This also has an effect on the notifying of the resources as well. When you notify the resources, uh, sending them their worksheet via email from RB8, you can also have this notice file attached to the email as well, so it would be nice. All right, status log tab. Basically what this is, is this is a log of all the status changes. So in RB8, anytime the status changes, we always know who did it and when. So again, we believe in keeping a good audit trail. The last tab here that we're going to go over is the notes log. This is your internal notes log system, so you and your staff can make all of your internal notes here, okay, simply by clicking New and typing in your notes. So anything you want to say about the job that your clients or your reporters don't need to see, this is where you can make those notes. This is for your eyes only. Okay. So that's using the calendar manager to look up jobs. And this is all, that's also using the calendar manager to actually input new jobs.